Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at one of my favorite things about Lightroom and it's non-destructive editing. As a matter of fact, of course, all the adjustments you make inside of Lightroom's develop module can be undone, they can be changed because the whole workflow is non-destructive. But what if you have a photo that you want to see different effects applied to it, but you don't want to have to keep undoing and changing them each time? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today and a way around that without having to make duplicate files or without having to undo it every time you want to, you want to make a change. We're going to talk about virtual copies. And this has been in Lightroom pretty much since day one, but a lot of people just totally miss it or they never discover virtual copies. And it's one of my favorite things to do, especially even for something of just simple cropping. I want to see one photo cropped one way or in the same photo cropped a different way. So let's take a look at how virtual copies work inside of Lightroom 3. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, switch over here. I have a photo that I edited a while ago. This is uh, not a new photo. I've taken these photos actually probably a couple years ago. And what I want to do now is I'd love to see that photo with maybe some of the new things that I've learned over the years applied to it with Lightroom. So if I hit the letter E, that'll bring it up into loop view. And the loop view, of course, lets me zoom in and check clarity and all that good stuff. And this photo has already been pretty much retouched inside of Photoshop. So it's a PSD now back inside of Lightroom. But what I'd love to do is possibly maybe even see this as a black and white, see it with uh, a couple different um, adjustments made in the develop module, but I don't want to lose what I've already done to it. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you by going back to the grid view that this is the PSD number 28 made from the original raw file. But now what I'd like to do with this PSD is make a virtual copy. Now I'm used to doing it from the keyboard, which is simply hitting command quote. However, what I'm going to do now is just go up to my photo menu just to show you where it is there. And there it is, create virtual copy. When I click create virtual copy, it does just that. It makes a virtual copy. And, and what I mean by virtual is that it didn't duplicate the PSD. It didn't make twice the file size. So as you can tell, by the little dog ear here, that there that's the virtual copy versus the master. So you have virtual copy, the master file. All right, so now I can make as many virtual copies as I want. So I can go back to that original and I'll hit command quote this time and that makes another virtual copy. And of course that would be control quote on the PC. So I can make as many virtual copies as I want of these files and never tie up any additional resources as far as, as Lightroom is concerned. So now I've got the first virtual copy made. What do I want to do with that? Well, if I head over to the develop module, I'll just hit the letter D. And that will take me over to develop. And now that I'm in the develop module, I'd love to see that maybe with a little bit more vibrance to it. So I'll just go ahead and add a little bit more vibrance to it. And there it is. Now if I go back to, oh, by the way, here's another, I notice this little warning I'm getting. And this is because I'm in Lightroom 3. And remember, I told you this was an old photo, one that I did back in Lightroom 2, back in 2009. So what it's asking me to do, if I want to do is, do I want to update this to the current way of processing the photo with the 2010 method inside of Lightroom? I can not do it, but if I do it, I'm going to even get better noise reduction, better, uh, better processing than I would have gotten with the 2009, but it might make it a slight look different. So that's why it's giving me the choice. Now, if I do click that, I get to uh, update it, and I did check the, I want to review the before and after. I want to see what it looks like. So when I do that, it's, you know, not that drastic of a difference in this case, so I'll go ahead and leave it. But that gave me the option of working with a new 2010 uh, workflow. Okay, so now that one's had a little bit more vibrance added to it. Now I'm going to go to this one, and we'll go back to develop. And I would love to see this one perhaps as a black and white. So I'll just scroll up. I have some presets here. Um, we have some black and white presets that come with Lightroom. I'll just go ahead and pick one. And the beauty of these is that you can hover over each one and see what they look like over here in the preview before you actually choose it. So let's go here, creative look. Uh, eh, eh. <laughs> oh, I kind of like the antique look. Now I'm going to detract from that just for a minute. And maybe we will go ahead and bring down the exposure on that just a bit. There we go. 
Oh, too much. Right about there. And again, I get the update to or update it to the 2010 process. I can go ahead and do that. I'm good with it. And we'll go back to uh, develop and again go back to the grid. So now I have the original, one with a little bit more vibrance, and one with the uh, antique look. But I still want that black and white. So let's go to this one. And we'll do uh, develop again. I kind of got sidetracked when I saw the antique look. And I kind of, ooh, wait, there's one. Let's go with that black and white. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, I would, really wouldn't do this to a woman because this is like making it really detailed and sharp. This would probably look better on a guy. You, you know, a woman, you want her skin to remain soft and, and beautiful. So that effect I probably wouldn't do for her. But let's go ahead and try this one. Again, let's just drop down the exposure a little bit on that. That's a little bit better. There we go. And maybe even do a little bit of recovery, or actually a little bit more fill light, and a little bit less recovery. Maybe something to that effect. Okay, so now, uh, one more. We'll go back to the grid. We'll hit the letter G. And so now I've got the original, three virtual copies. I want to make one more virtual copy because I just thought of something else I want to try. So we'll just hit the command quote one more time. And that will give me my virtual copy. And now we're going to do, I'm going to hit the letter R for crop. <laughs> crop. No, hit the letter R for reduction. There we go. So now I'm in the crop tool. And I want to uh, lock the aspect ratio so it maintains the original aspect ratio. I just want to crop it a little bit. Now, one of my favorite things also in Lightroom 3, it's kind of a little tip here. Sometimes you might start cropping, then you want to, you decide you want to crop it in the other orientation. So I'm portrait right now. If I wanted a landscape crop, now all I have to do is hit the letter X on my keyboard, and that will give me a landscape crop versus the um, vertical crop or a portrait crop. So X switches it back and forth. All right, so now that I have my uh, crop in place, and again, we'll just click Done. We've got it cropped. Now I've got all of these versions that I can export, print, lay out in a slideshow, do whatever I want. And as long as they're virtual copies, they're not taking up any additional resources. Lightroom is always just saying, okay, you're just applying metadata to a virtual copy of this file, and therefore I'm not going to you know, duplicate the file. I'm not going to do anything else. You don't actually get extra files until you export them or print to JPEG or any of the above. In other words, once you say take it out of Lightroom, then Lightroom will produce the copies that you ask for. But as long as they're in Lightroom, they're virtual. So you can make as many as you want and not tie up any additional hard drive space or resources. So that's a quick look at how virtual copies work inside of Lightroom 3. Now one last tip before we go. Um, I have my filters off, but one of the filters I believe you can do, uh, actually I want to go to my metadata here. Let's look for attributes. One of the attributes you can do actually is you can say for kind, just show me the master photos or just show me the virtual copies or show me videos for Lightroom 3. But this way, if you had a bunch of virtual copies and you kind of said, no, 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 I, just, I want to get back to just seeing the originals. That's a quick way to filter them down to just the ones you want. So if you said, you know, just show me the masters, don't show me any virtuals, or turn that, you know, let's see, let's go back there, or just show me the virtuals, I can turn those on and off at, at will to see what I want to see. So that was, again, just a quick look at how virtual copies work inside of Lightroom 3. I hope you enjoy it. Again, non-destructive. You can go back and forth, do whatever you want between those virtual copies, and life is good. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on the Adobe Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Terry White.